Today we're going to go ahead and look at completing our third screen, the vector screen, for our activity 1.3, the Germ Guide app. Now with your vector-borne screen, we're going to look at adding two additional buttons called malaria and the dengue fever. So let's go ahead and take a look at how we can go ahead and set up that third screen. Now some of the things you want to keep in mind is you do want to have your app companion open so that we can see live testing of this screen. And you can do that by simply going up to connect and selecting Chromebook that should open up your MIT app companion. Now, another thing to keep in mind is that we do want our screens to look identical. So if we go and take a look at our crowding screen, what we should know on our app companion is that it's going to match up with all the additional screens. So again, if we go to the water screen, we wanna make sure that everything looks similar to one screen to another. So with our next screen, we're going to go over to that vector screen. And before we go and create our first label, one of the things we want to do is check that vector screen component. And we're going to change that background color over to black. And then we're also going to go ahead down here at the bottom and uncheck so that the title is no longer visible. The next thing we want to do is modify that back button so that it matches the crowding and the water screen. So in order to do that, we're just going to simply stay on that vector screen. We can click on that back button and some of the properties that we've changed is we've made that bolded. We went ahead and changed the font face to mono. We went down and changed our shape over to rectangular. And again, we went ahead and changed our color to cyan. So you want those screens to kind of match up so that they have a similar look. The next thing we need to do is to add the actual title label that we have on our screen. So again, if we take a look at our crowding screen, you can see that we have our title label here called um, crowding label. So we're going to call this vector label and we're going to go ahead and add that to our vector screen. So from your vector screen, use the user interface and we're just going to drag that label in. Once we drag that label in, we can go ahead and rename that label and we'll just call this vector label. And again, that's going to help us once we get to the programming portion of this so that we know which names to actually call. Now with your vector label, we do need to change some of these properties. We are going to make that font bolded. We are going to go ahead and change the font size over to a 30 font, change the typeface over to mono. And then we're going to change the width of this to fill parent, which is going to be the entire width of the screen. Now we do have our text for label and we can't see anything right now. And that's because the text color is set to default. So let's change that default over to white. Now that we have that, we can see our text. And in that text, what we're going to want to type in there is vector borne diseases. Now, once you have that vector borne diseases in there, take a look at your app companion and make sure everything is looking the way you want it to. One of the things I want to do is probably change that text alignment over to be more centered on that screen. Now, once we have our label done, the next step is to go ahead and set up our buttons. So buttons should basically be brought into the screen, but we do need to create some arrangements here that are going to allow us to center that. So in our crowding screen, we can take a look at what we've added to our next part of our app. And here you can see we did create a horizontal arrangement and that horizontal arrangement is going to be used as basically a spacer between the label and the buttons. So we can bring in a horizontal arrangement and the only thing we really need to do with this is make sure that our width is set to 5%. So back on that vector screen, we're just going to go under the layout tab, grab a horizontal arrangement, make sure it's dropped down below the actual vector label and change that height over to 5%. Once we go ahead and do that, we're ready to go ahead and add those buttons. Now you will notice that that arrangement is kind of covering up that diseases. That's all right. It's not going to affect anything on the actual app. It's just going to space it out down below that label. So back over to that crowding screen, let's go and take a look at this vertical arrangement that we've added. With that vertical arrangement, we made sure that everything was aligned to the center. We left the background color set as default, but the height was fill parent and the width is fill parent. So that's important to notice with this. So back on that vector screen, we're going to stick in that layout drawer. We'll grab the vertical arrangement and bring it in. Let's go ahead and make sure that we center everything. And then from there, we'll change the height to a fill parent as well as the width. 
Once we have that arrangement set up, we're ready to go ahead and bring in our two buttons. So I'm gonna go up to that user interface. I'm gonna find that button and bring it in. I can grab another one and bring it in down below it. And now we have button one and button two. So for our buttons, what we have to remember is let's go ahead and rename them before we change any of the properties. So the first one's gonna be called the malaria button. And the second one, we're gonna go ahead and call the dengue fever button. Now, once you've gone ahead and renamed those and you selected OK, we're going to go ahead and move on to some of the properties. So in order to take a look at what those properties are, we're going to go back to our water screen because we do have one more horizontal arrangement to add in here. And again, that's going to be a nice little spacer for us as well. We're just going to go ahead and make that a height of 5%. That'll space out those buttons for us a little bit. So again, under layout, let's go back to horizontal arrangement. Make sure it's between the two buttons and then just go ahead and change that height over to 5%. Once we have that done, we're ready to move on and modify each of those buttons. Now we do know a couple of the properties that we can go ahead and change just by simply clicking on them. We know that we're gonna add an image to this. So if you want, you can go ahead and add that button image PNG file to both text for button one and the text for button two. That's going to give you a little bit of a spacing uh, where we can see what this is actually going to look like. Now that we have those buttons changed, let's go and look at some of those other properties that we need to change. So going ahead and I'm going to click on the collar button for this one. You can see that we've made our font bold. We've made that font size 36. That may be a little bit of a problem with the dengue fever since it's a little bit longer, but we can test that out once we get there. So bolded 36, we changed the font typeface. The height for our button was set to 90 pixels. So let's make sure that we go ahead and set that to 90 pixels when we get there. So back to my vector screen. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and make that font bold. We went ahead and changed the font size to 36. We're going to change that over to mono and our height for this one was set to 90 pixels once we have that 90 pixels we're going to go ahead down let's go ahead and change that text for button one and just type in the word malaria now that we have that malaria set up and we click off of that we should see that we now have our malaria button ready to go text for button two repeat the same process font bolded Font size is going to be set to 36. Once we do that, we can change the typeface to mono. The height is going to be set to 90 pixels. And then from there, we're going to go ahead and change that text for button two to dengue fever. Once we're done with that, we can click off of it and you can see that the dengue fever fits nicely on that button. So I think we're pretty much good to go. So before we move on to the programming portion of this, going back to our water screen, what we have to keep in mind is that we have two non-visible components that are gonna be brought in, and those are those players. And with those players, we're gonna to need to go ahead and make sure we add a source to them. So when you're on your vector screen, we're gonna to need to go under our media drawer. We're gonna bring in a player, and we'll bring in a second one, and you're gonna notice it comes in as player one and player two. And we're going to repeat that same process. We're just going to go ahead and rename that. And let's call that the malaria player. And then we can go ahead and do the same thing for player two and rename that. And we'll call that dengue fever and add that player after it. This way we know exactly what it is. Now that we have that, don't forget we need to set the source. So for my dengue fever, we're going to change that source over to that dengue fever MP3. Same thing with the malaria player. Change your source, find the malaria MP3, go ahead and click on it and select OK. Now that we have them all working, we can go over to our block view. And in our last screen, we went ahead and learned a little bit about how to use the backpack. So we should still have those components in the backpack. And what we're going to do is go ahead and bring that cholera button out. Now, just because we're on the vector born screen, you're gonna notice we're gonna get these X's because we don't have a cholera button set up for this screen, but we're still gonna use the syntax here to help us get this to play. So what we're gonna do is just change that cholera button over to malaria, 
and then we'll change the call caller a player over to the malaria player. Once we have that done, we can just go ahead and right click and duplicate that malaria button. And what we're gonna go ahead and do is change malaria over to dengue fever and the call malaria player to dengue fever as well. Now you wanna make sure you go ahead and test your buttons on your app, make sure that everything is playing correctly. We'll give this a nice little test. If everything works correctly, then we're ready to kind of move on to the next portion of this where we'll address some more conditional statements in a later activity. So go ahead and click your buttons, test to see if they work. Measles is a highly contagious respiratory infection caused by a virus. With measles, you can have a total body skin rash, flu-like symptoms, and high fever. There's no specific treatment for measles other than drinking plenty of fluids and getting lots of rest. And there you have your Germ Guide app for activity 1.3.